Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a quick rant for you guys about boiler weights inside steam engines. Um, so a little preface on this. So as you guys know, the weight of a the, the amount of weight you put over powered wheels on a model train is very important in determining how much your engine can pull, with the exception of you know like um, traction tires and whatnot. But that's the reason why, for example, on diesel engines, because every single wheel is powered. Um, you will see manufacturers try to maximize the amount of weight inside the uh, inside the shell. Um, diesel engines are usually made of plastic shells, and so therefore weight is very important. And so that's why the more amount of open space you have or space taken up by electronics like speakers, speaker enclosures, decoders, etc., means the less weight you have inside the engine. Um, and that results in a diesel engine that pulls less. On a steam engine, that's less of a problem because you have a tender which can which is not powered and you can put all the other stuff um, besides the critical motors and gearboxes inside the tender. Um, this means that most of your boiler space is empty and, and you know, you fill it up with weight um, and also the motor, of course, and the gearboxes and whatnot. And that's the reason why I really don't like the idea of, you know, putting smoke units inside your engines because you have so, you know, such valuable space inside this boiler here. Um, and if, if you're just filling it up with a, a, a smoke unit, which is very light, um, you're basically losing a lot of pulling power because of that. And, you know, even more so if you put another speaker inside the engine or, or, or you know, more electronics. So you put your decoder inside the engine. I think that's a lazy way of doing it because uh, while it makes wiring simpler, it also means that you're wasting so much space in here that could be full of weight and you're putting decoders and stuff inside there. And so that's why I'm, I'm, I've actually been against putting boiler barkers inside the steam engines because I, I've personally yet to own a steam engine where I felt that it couldn't use more weight and that the traction was, you know, it was pulling too much power almost. Um, I felt like almost every engine I have owned could always use a little more weight. And so there's no reason to put a boiler barker uh, speaker inside your engine. Um, because it takes a valuable space that it could be used for weight. Um, I am not against the premise of putting a secondary speaker inside your engine if your pulling power is satisfactory and you have extra space, but that's yet to be the case for me. Um, but anyways, I digress. So what I wanted to talk about was uh, I've been currently working on uh, these two brass engines, and that's kind of the point of relevance uh, for this video. Um, but I'm taking apart these engines, and they are so light. Like this is a this is a Mohawk. This is not this is an expensive model as well. It's not one of those cheap, you know, uh, crappy engines. It's a it's a really decent model. It's a Key 1989 run uh, L2B Mohawk New York Central, um, and it it feels so light by hand. And I took it apart, and this is the tiny little weight inside the engine. This thing is pathetic. Um, if you look at you know the size of this, so it goes it goes this way. So not only is the diameter of this thing tiny, you can see how much extra, you know, space in the edges there are for this boiler, for this weight. Um, they could have made this weight so much bigger in diameter. And I know the reason why it's because they didn't trim all the, you know, all the little brass end pieces and whatnot on the sides. So they had to make it smaller, but they could have totally just trimmed those off and put a bigger, bigger boiler weight in there. Um, but also the length of it is so small. I mean, so you look at two, the two screws, you're supposed to mount it like here. Um, and you can see that all the space on the front is just void of anything. Um, in fact, they actually put a little bit of detailing on the front here, which takes up space, valuable space. If you imagine you put this in, basically all the space in the front here can't be used. Um, but you still have a whole lot of extra space that you can put more weight in. Um, and additionally, there's no, uh, there's nothing here. Uh, like the gearbox, of course, slides into this slot here. But on the sides, you know, all the sides here is empty there's nothing in there and the motor even the motor i mean this motor isn't round it's flat on the sides you could have put more weight here but i digress um basically there's so much more space there's so much more room in the boiler for more weight and you know obviously you want your weight to balance the drivers you don't want too much weight in the front you don't want too much weight in the back um and so that's that's the reason i can see why they didn't put you know all this stuff over here but they could have totally you know filled up this empty space here with more weight if you, if you imagine it right um and and I just I'm I'm getting sick and tired of these of these engines that are not at all heavy and don't pull like anything, um, because of this. Like they could they could pull so much more cars that they just add a little bit more weight. And I understand why. You know this this model is meant honestly more for display purposes. It's actually not really meant to be run, despite having you know a coasting gearbox and all that stuff. Um, you can tell because you know the trailing truck it barely has any clearance and whatnot. So it's not, it's not meant to be a fantastic runner. It's meant to be more of a display piece. That's the reason why they didn't you know, put as much effort into cramming as much weight as possible. Um, here's another example. This is another key model. Um, this is a Santa Fe 282 I'm working on. 
And here, let me just take the light, turn this light on. So if I turn this light on and I put this engine over it, look at that. Like the boiler weight is tiny. There's so much space above there that can be used for, you know, more weight. They could have fit such a larger piece of weight inside um, that engine. That being said, the length of this one's a little bit better. It goes from here to about here. And that's that's pretty solid. I don't think they could cram much more lengthwise, but diameter wise, they totally could have. And also they could have, you know, put more weight again, again, over the gearbox um, to make it to balance the, the, the shell out. So um, anyways, I guess to summarize, so there are good brass manufacturers that have put, you know, actually to put effort into designing a piece of weight that would fit properly. For example, the West Side of Mizuno Hudson's have a piece of weight that looks like this. So I drew a little diagram. Excuse the really terrible handwriting. Um, I just kind of quickly drew this thing up. But this is like the, the boiler weight you see here. But a good one would extend past the front here to take up space in the smoke box and basically, you know, have a little hole here for the screw to go through so it doesn't affect the screw um, instead of just simply not going that far forward and then the back you would create something like this where you have a slot for the gearbox but these can extend all the way to the motor basically um, and this allows you to put you know very valuable weight directly over the drivers both balancing out the uh, the boiler and um, and adding weight to it so this is a good design piece of weight and so unfortunately uh, and yeah you see this in like west side Mizuno Hudson's but you don't see it here so I'm going to try to remedy, remedy that um, for the diameter problem I was going to take some like sheet lead, sort of like this. You could bend it really easily. Um, and I was gonna basically just cut a, a few piece, one or two pieces out and slide them basically inside that gap and then glue them to the stock piece of weight. I'm gonna take the piece of weight out and then glue those on top of it. And then for the sides here, I was gonna use some of these like lead chunks. I'm gonna use a hammer and like tap them, tap them so it's, you know, cir like, a cir like, a, like a circle almost as, a, as an outline, uh, like a half moon and then stick them in like here. Um, you get the idea, but basically slide them in the side here and glue them to the sides of the boiler um, to basically mimic like this, except they'll be permanently mounted because I'll be gluing them in place. And, you know, I'm not putting any of the other electronics in here. I'm keeping all the electronics inside the tender. Um, I, I'm not that anal about sound, so I don't see the point of adding a second speaker. It also just adds two additional more wires you got to add to the engine and tender. So I'm keeping the wiring to a relative minimum. Um, but this this is kind of my attempt to remedy it. Uh, for this one, I want to put some weight in the front here. So I'm actually just going to put some stick-on weights, sort of like this, and just simply stick them to the front uh, the front face of the of the boiler weight, sort of like if you imagine like that, a few maybe a few pieces. Um, obviously, I'm going to make sure that the it's well balanced on the drivers. The way I do that is I stick a pencil or something here, and and you know put the weight on top, of course, and then make sure that the engine is not like too front heavy or too back heavy. Um, that's, my, that's my plan, at least right now with these engines, but it's just a shame that I have to do this for something that's so expensive and, and something that clearly they could have spent some more effort in designing a better piece of weight inside the engine. But anyways, that's my little ramble for today. Um, you know, ready to run engines are generally much better about this. Um, these kind of are excusable because they are handmade. So, you know, they can't, they, you know, they, they can't really make a engineer a perfectly sized weight that can fit slot perfectly inside the boiler. Um, so it's, it's less of a problem with ready to run engines. Those are just inherently sometimes poorly designed, um, like not very efficiently using up the weight, the space inside the boiler. Um, but anyways, this is more of a rant for, I guess, brass engines. And I don't mean to make another video about brass, but it's just really annoying and frustrating that, you know, I have to put this sort of effort into, into the weight, the basic, you know, ability for the engine to pull cars. And this should easily make the engine pull maybe dub almost double the amount of cars that it could pull from the stock configuration. But all right, uh, I wasn't going to update this video, but uh, I am going to add this last little clip here just to show what I ended up doing. Um, so this was the weight for the Mohawk, the uh, 482. You can see I actually was able to remold uh, these weights using just you know a hammer and an anvil, uh, remold them into like this weird like mushroom shape on each side. So I was actually able to cram two of those weights into this one area and then put a third one stick on the front uh, just to make sure it all sticks together. I was also able to piece uh, cut a piece of like sheet lead and just, just use some Kapton tape to tape it on the outside. So this thing is much heavier now. I think I added it. I added about an ounce or a little more than an ounce to this like five ounce weight. Um, the, for the Mikado, I added just three of those because I couldn't extend the length of it. Um, without unbalancing the engine, so I ended up just st sticking three of these weights uh, on because as you saw, there's a lot of weight. Uh, there's a lot more space around the weight, 
um, than in front or behind it. And then for the uh, Mikado, I was gonna, I kind of molded these two weights into like a curved shape. I know it's kind of ugly, but you know, this curved shape will help me, allow me to kind of stick it in the boiler around here. Cause now that I increased the weight on this side, I have to counterbalance it to make sure the weight's even on the drivers. So I'm putting uh, one of each, each of these in here in the boiler, uh, right where the, right where the universal joint is. So it's not gonna affect anything there. Um, for the Mohawk, um, I'm actually going to, because there's, the boiler is so big, I was actually gonna slide this, which I bent uh, out of the sheet uh, over here, again, to counterbalance balance this side. And then I uh, shaped some of the quarter ounce weights into uh, like a hat, like a slight, you know, bend, um, slight curve shape on the side. Um, and this way I can stick these actually on the inside if that makes sense. So um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna slide this into here, and then I'm gonna stick these on the sides of this. Um, so that'll be like roughly this area. Again, that's to match the universal joint, so it looks something like uh, this. And then next to the gearbox, I was gonna add even more because there's just so much space here. Um, so I was gonna take two more of these and just stick them on the sides here. The reason I didn't add another one of these is because this also restricts the vertical uh, limit of the uh, gearbox, but I'm trying to keep that relatively open. So um, I didn't feel, I also didn't feel that, I felt like that was too much weight. So frankly, I think this on the, uh, on over here, uh, just to counterbalance the weight, it would be just right. So in total, I'd be adding a whole bunch more weight. So all of this is for the Mohawk and this is for the uh, Mikado, but that's, that's the plan. And I, I don't, I'm probably not gonna update you guys on the rest of the video. It's just gonna look like the engine's done. So uh, you really can't see it from the outside, but I'm just gonna do the finished install up by using some uh, foam tape uh, to adhere them to the sides and also grind out some of the uh, protruding uh, brass bits. But um, that's pretty much it. So anyways, hope you guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully it was helpful for somebody out there. Um, there are many ways of adding weight to your engine. There's many more creative ways you could put it into the domes, you could put it into the air tanks. I've seen many people do much more crazy things to add weight. I'm just doing something relatively simple here. Um, but hopefully it's helpful for someone. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.